So you're making your first game or your second or whatever. You have this amazing idea. You just have to bring it to life. And chances are that on some occasion, your player has to do some input. Things like swinging your sword, moving around, jumping, crawling, everything like that. You have to use input for it. In this video, we'll be covering a couple of examples how we can do that. If that's something that interests you, be sure to stick around. So why would you use the new input system? Well, personally, I really dislike the old input system. It is very easy to use. However, it's very easy to make mistakes. In this system, you have a lot more freedom because you're working action-based and you can easily create control maps that map to other things. While in the old system, it was, yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan and you probably shouldn't either. I think in time, the old input system is being uh, re replaced with the new one. While you can still use the old input system, I highly recommend you start transferring all of your projects that you want to continue into the new input system. The old input system always pushed me to input uh, managers like Rewired or if even in control. However, with the new input system, I have the feeling like I don't really need them anymore. They might still offer benefit to you, but I really, really like the new input system and I think you will too. First things first, if you're starting a new Unity project, at least at the time of recording this video, the new Unity system is, uh, new Unity input system is not default in a project. So we have to install it. The way we do that is we go to Window, Package Manager, and the top here, you can see Packages, and in this case it says In Project. We want to make sure we select the Unity registry. Now we have a very big list. Let's just scroll down and search for input system and hit install. Now just wait for a brief second while it's installing. Once it's installed, you will see a warning pop up from Unity saying, hey, you're using new in input system. You have to restart basically, just hit yes. Now that Unity has restarted, we are ready to go. I set up a basic scene where we basically have a little player right here on the screen, our little blue dot that we are going to move around. A couple of things that we need for this is, first of all, we need to detect input. Unity already provided a very basic thing for this called the player input, and we can just add it to our player. This is very important, otherwise, well, Unity's input system won't detect any of our buttons. The new Unity input system works on something called actions. So we need to make some. You can create the uh, actions by pressing this button over here and it will create a template version. But what I prefer to do is go right mouse click, create, and then the bottom input actions. We can now give it a name, for example, player controls and hit enter. Now we can just open it up and we get a new window. This is where we basically configure everything that our player can do. First things first, there is nothing in here. Let's cover some things one at a time. On the top left, you can see that we have no control schemes. We can add a control scheme. This can, for example, be for keyboard or joystick, things like that. So in this case, since I'm on a PC, I'll be using a keyboard example and I'll just call it keyboard. I can give it a list of optional or requ uh, things or requirements. So if I just hit the plus here, you can see there are a lot of options and I just select keyboard. And I say requirement is that you have a keyboard. So if I, for example, publish this for PlayStation, this control scheme would not be active and hit save. Great, we made our control scheme, but we can't really do anything yet. This is where actions and action maps come into play. First, let's create a new action map and we can call it, for example, gameplay. A great example of where action maps can be used is imagine uh, Grand Theft Auto, where you walk around, but then go into a vehicle and your controls uh, change. You can make a action map for, for example, driving your car and for player movement in general. Another common use case is when you have player movement and UI interaction on a separate action map. Next, we have to create an action. There are a couple of, of different actions you can do. In this video, we will be covering a simple action by pressing a button and a more quote unquote complex one where we do player movement. So let's start with the simple one and just say it is a button and we call it, for example, fire. This is a very common use case in Unity where uh, they use a fire as an example, so we will as well. So this fire action we have to make a binding for it. So when we click on the binding part, we can see a path 
And in this case, I'm just going to press listen. Now I can press any button on my keyboard and it will detect what, do, so, uh, what I do. So let's do it with F for fire and just select F on keyboard. Now we basically configured our first action so we can start using it in our code. However, let's just quickly add the second one already. So how we can do this is with a little plus up here and we can just click create, let's call it move. And this is a bit different since we want movement to be bound to one action. We don't just say it's a button, but we say pass through. With this uh, pass through, we basically can map very easily a vector two to movement. As a control type, we can just say vector two. And the cool thing is now is we can uh, just click add binding and then add a up, down, left, right composite. This means we can easily uh, map WASD to a vector two so that we can easily move our character around. So hit that, 2D vector is fine. And then we just have to bind all our actions. So up, listen, W, down, listen, S, left, listen, A, and right, listen, D. The cool thing is also, you can add multiple of these bindings to one action. For example, if you want to do movement with the arrow keys as well, you can just add another up, down, left, right composite. And then both of these will work as movement. If you don't have auto save enabled here in the editor, just hit save asset to be sure that you have your controls set up. Now we can close this window and go back to our player. And we have here an actions property in our player input. Let's just quickly drag our player controls in there. So it is configured. Now we need to select our default scheme. Well, we only configured one. Remember the control scheme for a keyboard. So just select that one. And we see our default map is also gameplay. So this is now already configured. Now let's do a little bit of coding. So I already set up a very basic script where we will use a rigid body and a movement speed variable to control our player. However, we still need to add the input to control this. The first thing we want to do is get a reference to the action we want to use. Now there is a very easy class for this already and it's called uh, the input action reference. So just create a public input action reference and we can import it. As you can see, Rider automatically filled in using Unity Engine input system. Depending on your editor, you might need to add this uh, import yourself. So this input action reference, let's call it move since that's the first one we will be doing. Now, how do we check this, uh, the value of a vector two composite? Well, we can, for example, in our update, just say, hey, our movement direction equals, and then say our move action dot action, because we, want, we have a reference and we want to access the thing itself, dot read value. What value are we going to read? That's right, a vector two, like we discussed earlier. And that's it. Now, every update, we will see what button is being pressed. If it's a move action, we will put it in our move direction and we can apply it. After that, we, you can see I already added some code to move the character around using a rigid body. Now, let's set it up in Unity. So let's go to our player and we add our little script and it is our player movement script. So you can see we need a couple of things. First of all, we need a rigid body 2D for the movement. So let's add that real quick, drag it in there. We can give it a movement speed. Let's just say five in this example. And then we need our reference. So you can see here, uh, if we open it up here, you can see we have our gameplay fire and our gameplay move actions. So let's just drag our move in the move slot. Hit save. And if we run the game now, we should basically be able to move the character around. So you can see we can move it around and the input is working. Great. Now we also added the other thing, remember the fire. So what will we do with this one? Well, let's go back to our script copy and paste 
another input reference and call it fire. Now, something different about a button is we basically use C sharp events to listen when we want to fire. So how I usually do this is we have our lifecycle event for the on enable. So in this on enable, we are going to add a C sharp event so we know whenever it's triggered. So we just do fire dot action dot. There are also other lifecycle events for this. If you want a more detailed explanation on that one, do let us know in the comments. And then we can just add a listener to it and call it fire, for example. Now, this is a method basically that you want to call. However, it doesn't exist yet. So let's just create our method. Important here is we take in a input action callback uh, context. This is something Unity requires to basically do it. In this example, let's just do a debug.log to say that we fired. However, we basically start listening to this event the moment the game object becomes enabled. Great. It is very important, however, that you also stop listening when you disable it, because every time you re-enable it, it will add a new one. So to do this, it's uh, just on disable. To disable this action, once again, when we disable the game object, we just say fire.action dot started and then minus equals and then our fire method. It is very important, like I said, to do this because otherwise, if you uh, disable your game object, enable it again, press one button, you're, you will fire twice. Now that we've set this up, let's go back to Unity. And you can see we have a second input action reference here. So let's just copy it right in here. And we see our fire input action has been bound. Hit save real quick. So if we start Unity now, you can see that we can still move around. But if we now press F, we are spamming fire in the console every time we press it. And this is a very basic setup of how the input system can be used. Now, if you want a more deep dive into the input system or if any specific things like you want to see like action rebinding, for example, letting the player configure which key he should press for the fire action, do let us know in the comments. I hope you learned something and that you can now add input to your game so you can basically bind everything you want. The fire we used here can easily be your spacebar key to jump and things like that. So if you like the video, do make sure to hit the like button. And if you like this kind of content, just hit that subscribe button because we do make content like this twice a week. We also make other things like vlogs, general game dev tips, or even the more business related side of indie game development. So do make sure to hit that like, uh, subscribe button if that's something you fancy. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.